Hello again. The cat and I are hiding. <clears throat> this is actually my daughter's, my elder daughter's room. I haven't asked her because she's away, but I'm, I'm sure she won't mind. I hope. <sighs> Leaves in my hair. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about social stories. Now, Carol Gray, spelled with an A, has a fabulous website all about social stories, and it's a non-profit and has some wonderful materials there. But for others on a tighter budget uh, and needing a quicker fix, um, you can make your own social stories. If you know what a social story is, then bye-bye, you don't need to be watching this. And if you don't know what it means, then perhaps I can enlighten you a little bit, I hope. So, the best way to describe a social story is in context with an example. So, let's pretend that we're three. Or rather, remember that we were all once three. Memory fading. So, you're a typically developing child, and I am autistic and non-verbal. Well, not completely non-verbal. I can say juice, milk, Jurassic era, mum and no, but that's not going to get us very far in this particular situation. So your mum takes you to the park, my mum takes me to the park, none of us know each other. And I spot you straight away. You're over there in the sandbox displaying some fabulous fine motor skills with a sieve and a bucket and a spade. I think that's the one for me. So I troll over to you and I blunder a bit because my gross motor skills sometimes let me down. And when I get there, I show you my claws and my fangs, and I roar because we might as well get down to the dinosaur business. But for some unknown reason, you whiz off back to your mum. I think, well, are you shy? What could that be? But I give you the benefit of the doubt, and I try again. And I ferret you out behind your mum, and this time I have even bigger claws and even bigger fangs and an even louder roar because it's T-Rex time, the king. What else could there be? Just as things are going so swimmingly, my mum comes along and she starts wittering away to your mum, 19 to the dozen. And then she picks me up and tucks me under her arm and I want to say, um, excuse me, I don't want to be a pterodactyl, I'm a T-Rex today. But she doesn't listen, parents never do. And she carts me off back to the car, and before you know it, I'm strapped in and we are driving home. And any chance of a beautiful blossoming friendship is dead in the water. Now if that sounds familiar to you, apart from the dinosaur bit, I'm going to shave my head or have a haircut or something, um, then maybe a social story is something that would help your child. There again, you might also feel my children are typically developing and uh, whilst I get the dinosaur thing, um, I really don't think that's for me. And that would be a very valid point. However, it's a rare parent that has not had some experience of difficulties with sharing, taking turns, um, the bully at school, and if you're very unlucky, the occasional nightmare. And social stories can help your children through all these things. For some magical reason that I do not understand, if your child is the star of a book that you have made for them, you have captivated their attention. If they can't read, um, obviously you can read it to them, but a lot of these things can be done simply with pictures. It's not rocket science, you don't have to be very creative or artistic. If you can draw a stick figure and you've got any Photoshop skills, which I don't, um, you can just you know, stick a little photograph of their head on top of your stick figure. And this can help guide them through all sorts of difficult situations that they come across over the years. I have many different versions for each child because you can individually tailor them. So, um, say you went to the library and got the exact book that you wanted about you know, a pet dying. Well, that can be great, but unless it's your pet with your name, uh, your, your child's name, sometimes it can just be too far wide of the mark. So this way, you can do your own. You just need paper, ordinary A4, A4? Yes, A4. Colored paper works best for mine. 
and you can do weekend projects when you go away for a weekend just like a little scrapbook which is very um, popular in America. If your child has tactile issues and doesn't really want a big metal lumpy staple in the middle of their book, and who would, you can always just get a darning needle and thread through cord or wool or something soft and cuddly, uh, just like they did in the old book binding days. So I think that's probably all I've got to say. I hope that's helpful and I do hope you'll give it a go. Peace is over now. We have to go back to the troops. Bye.